Hello, Borna. Hello, hello. This is an exciting day. It is. It's the first, uh, first of a new series. It is. The series is called Two Up. And Australians will know, being the chronic gamblers that we are, what that means. But for the rest of the world, we want to tell you about Two Up. Two Up is a game where you have two coins on a wooden paddle. You throw the coins in the air and you bet on the outcome. While they're in the air. While they're in the air. And then that's what we did before there was technology and pokies and everything else. And we're going to continue that. However, we're changing the concept a little bit. This is simply the Time and Tide team going head to head within very distinct categories. That's right. Two minutes to talk about each watch that we choose. What are the categories today? So today we've got field yes. and we've got vintage. Now vintage, vintage is quite a broad sort of spectrum, but the two that we picked, I think are quite well matched up. They are. Shall we begin? Okay, we're not gonna do the whole two up paddle. We're gonna do a single coin. So this is like the 15th take. So you're protecting your precious watches very, very well over there. Yep, I can't afford to buy them again, so. Choose a head or tail. Or while it's in the air. Heads. That's tails. <laughs> we're going field. So Matt, our trusty uh, colleague, will time us from now, okay, great. So Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical Watch. I just think this is just a lay down misere. I have won this round. So I, I will take the chocolates now. Uh, yeah, we'll Hamilton, <laughs> Hamilton, you must understand, Hamilton is a relatively new brand in Australia. It has not had distribution here for the longest time. It has not had there hasn't been a way to get this watch apart from buying it from overseas. So when, you know, it was announced or when we were able to secure distribution rights in Australia, it was just the happiest day for me. And since then, we are introducing the country to a brand that I just love. And it's this mix of authenticity, the, the power of the Swatch Group to put really great movements and to, to, to sort of come up with the best of all materials for the price. And it's also just the watch. I mean, what do you love about this watch? It's going to sound weird. I'm going to say I love the strap because it reminds me of one of the very first watches that, that I ever had, this sort of Swiss Army leather and, and NATO combo. Yeah. And just the watch itself. I mean, you know, I, I love vintage. I say it in pretty much every video we mm -hmm. make. And this is a modern watch that looks like it's 50 years old. And yes. that, that's not by any means a bad thing. So yeah. it, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's sized for that classic. I, I did this to sort of rub it in Bourne's face because this is precisely the kind of watch that he would love. But I really love the matte appearance of the steel. There's sort of like an anodized steel. Um, again, all of these, uh, you know, brown and khaki and then the, the beige loom, the beige five minute markers. It's just a winner. 24 hour dial, um, military field watch that is just, frankly for the money. There's just nothing that's going to come close to it. So round one, um, I've left myself a little time uh, just to say... Feeling comfortable. Yeah, I am feeling comfortable. I really just needed to pull it out and it was over. Um, looking nervously at Matt. This is a maybe the best field watch on the market for the money. Come at me. Uh, done. Wow, that was actually perfectly timed. Yep. But alas, even, even though you perfectly used up your time, I think my watch here is the winner. Not just the watch, but also wow. the story. Okay. So, okay. on the table in front of me, uh, oh, Matt, Matt. if okay. you would like to do We're off. We're off. I have the Seiko Alpinist SARB017 or the SARB17. I mean, the Alpinist. They're sort of similar color schemes, aren't they? They are, they are quite similar. These guys are almost related. Ah, I, I like what you're doing. You, you're wasting my time. <laughs> I, I like it, I like it. Right, so yeah, you can put this aside as nice as it is. So, the story will be familiar to most of you, mm -hmm. sort of uh, inspired uh, by watches made for Japanese mountaineers in mm -hmm. the early 50s, 60s. I, m my dream is one day to have a full Alpinist collection. I, I don't have that kind of money and I probably never will, but you know, one can dream, right? Yep. But with this one, Really, the story is is where that you know the story is what makes this watch. So, I'm waiting to hear it, and you're wasting precious time. No, I'm feeling comfortable. I just need to align this perfectly. So, uh, the way I sort of came about this watch was Instagram, uh, internet, when I was researching basically what to buy mm -hmm. as a as a student, and. Um, the person I was dating at the time was mm -hmm. uh, not too keen on me spending you know, five, six hundred dollars on a watch. We happened to break up, and uh, this was my first breakup watch. Oh. And this was also the very last watch, uh, the very last Alpinist Sarbo 17 available in Australia. It was the last one sold from the boutique. And um, that is really how I came about it. And Should we give her a special shout out? No. No. 
Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, I love this watch. Not just for that reason, it wears so well. I mean, I haven't even put it on. What am I doing? Uh, Matt, how am I doing for time? Two minutes. You oh, I got 20, 20 minutes seconds. To spare. 20 and seconds to spare. Look at this. That felt like 10 minutes, guys. Did you feel that? Did you feel the is. sense of shock? It's inside? perfect. This has been with me to the desert. I've swam with it. I've, I've literally lost this in, in the Sahara. So, oh, and I will just wait for the last five seconds. So. <laughs> okay, okay, ding, ding, ding. We'll, we'll have to overlay some noise effects there and have the timer there because we can't see the time as it elapses. But that was um, astonishingly a long amount of time for that. Um, well done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. People, by the way, you can uh, comment about who you think is winning this battle. Um, that's round one down. Um, and you can also comment on which watch you'd like to take of the of our two. Now, well, you can't have mine. So no, no, these aren't these aren't available. <laughs> but which watch would you? Anyway, you know, you get the concept. It's not that complicated. So, are we going to slip again, or do, do I just go now? Okay, uh, Matt, you can begin now. So, my second watch is maybe the watch with the best story in my collection. It is the Amiga Ranchero uh, from 1959. Now, Chef's kiss. It, it is, look at those, that pumpkin-y loom. Matt, that's awesome. It's, uh, it's very evenly patinaed. I just get a little punch in the heart when I see this watch. I never wear it because I have grown so attached to it that it's it's fragility is a concern to me. But now that I look at it, I think, why? Why? You I should wear it. I have to wear, it. wear it. So the story of this watch is that I learned about the Ranchero uh, over the years and the fact that it was a catastrophic marketing ploy by Omega <laughs> to name a watch uh, that was destined for the South American market, the Omega Farmer because they didn't do enough testing on the name. And they thought, well, Ranchero, yeah, sounds that's perfect. a good idea. Amazing. You can imagine Amazing. like a Mad Men episode where they're sitting around a boardroom like, it's toasted. No, ranchero. I was like, put it, we, we'll take it, we'll take it. Yeah. It means farmer. And they were trying to appeal to the South American far agricultural class who were actually getting quite wealthy and moving into the middle class. So it's like saying, hey, here's a watch to remind you of where you've come from. That wasn't really what, uh, what was going to work. You couldn't afford this before, but now because yeah. of our blessings, <laughs> you mm. can. So I have had this watch authenticated by Amiga. It's an amazing program. I have 30 seconds remaining. Uh, it's an amazing program where you can send in your watch and they will send you back information about it. This was actually bought by an American soldier in Germany. Uh, it's an extraordinary story. It has still has some radium left over from this was a transitional reference where the radium was replaced with tritium. Uh, so there's all of this captured in the service document. I'm finished now, I think. Um, I absolutely love this watch, the Amiga Ranchero from 1959. All right, nice. Uh, you... Since it does have radium, please put it away. Exactly. I do not want if there was cancer. a Geiger counter here, it'd be. T t t yeah, yeah. No, yep. it just reminds me of the awful stories of the poor girls that were painting those dials. Yes. So, we want to uh, talk about the wolf. Yeah, yeah. What do you have and, and are you prepared to uh, accept defeat at this early point? Well, look, I love that watch very much. Yep. And uh, I've looked at many, uh, they're quite rare to find. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what I have I'll is... I'll leave it out just to rub Yeah, me. yeah, yeah, absolutely, yep. absolutely. Well, what, what I have is, I think what I consider... Okay. wait a minute. Oh, yeah, uh, sorry, I forget, oh. I'm, I'm trying to cheat here. Well, yep. What I have here is, what I, in my opinion, is one of the most beautiful watches that were created. Mm -hmm. And that's the Universal Jeanette Polarator. I've done it properly. It's the micro rotor, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, General Gentle designed, I, as I always say when someone asks me, it's the only Gentle design I can afford. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't mind that at all. It's just such a beautiful watch. I love a sector dial. This is a sector dial executed perfectly. Look at that black. I think this is a little closer than I thought it would be, to be honest. Yeah, yep. yeah. And again, there is a bit of a story with this watch. Mm -hmm. our, um, our colleagues from over the pond, but to the Pacific side, yep. uh, for Dinky, they, they published a story about this watch and mm -hmm. about how fantastic of a value proposition is mere weeks after I had bought mine. I yep. paid. They uh, somehow they knew. Somehow they knew. Somehow yep. they knew. I paid just over a thousand dollars for it, mm -hmm. and uh, as soon as that story went live, they were about double that. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I probably wouldn't be able to, wouldn't have been able to afford it at the time. But I'm, yeah, I'm very glad that I, I went in when I did. 
And describe I, more features of the dial here because this is a classic. It's isn't just it? it's 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 so gorgeous. I mean, look at that sort of patterning around the around the outside with the indices that are actually in the refort. Uh, yes, it, it's quite fantastic. And the dome again, like. And it, there's actually a, a, a radial engraving. In yeah, that, in exactly. That and, and the dome chapter, crystal right? looks like it was a complete afterthought. They were like, oh yeah, yeah, damn, we forgot we need to put a crystal on it. <laughs> and nothing gives as beautiful distortions as, as a vintage crystal. Yes. Uh, it runs awfully. It runs about two minutes fast, but I do not care. You know what? The, the, there's a really fine scalloping in the side of the uh, uh, Moza, yeah. my Moza here, in the same way that there's that really fine engraving. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. The, the, the lags, the, the sort of way that they curve around the dial, they're, okay. they're just, just wonderful. Well, I think ding ding, we're, we're, at, we're, we're complete. There you go. I'm exhausted. Um, I, I honestly came into this thinking that it was just going to be embarrassing for you. Um, I still feel that way. But no, it's, I'm it's... generally quite embarrassing. So. <laughs> What do you think? This is actually, this segment's really all about the viewer. Please comment on uh, which of these two watch collections you would uh, take. Or also, if you want to give it to us, there, there is an outcome where we tie. Exactly. So you take one from each. Exactly. Um, but certainly, I would say that. Uh, and the winner annoying. gets the other person's watches. This is no. like pink slips, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. Okay. No, no, no. We'll discuss is. this yeah. offline. Thanks for watching our first two up. Um, we will have more coming at you. Born up, we will meet again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>